I'm Edie Lash, executive editor at Hub Culture here in Davos 2023 with a favorite repeat guest. Hugh, how are you? Very well indeed, and delighted to be back with you, Edie. So one of the themes in this Davos, well, the big theme is cooperation in a fragmented world. The climate transition is a big part of, or the energy transition is a big part of that conversation. And thinking about energy security as a result of what's happened in Ukraine, the war in Ukraine, and the and the effect on energy supply, I wonder how you put all of that together. Well, look, it's complex, but in a bumper sticker, it's that we've taken one step back, but we need to take two to three steps forward. Mm. And I do think, as we look back in five or ten years' time, this will be a moment that we got really serious about accelerating the deployment of renewables and, you know, and becoming more green. And I think just in the same way that, let's say, in France in 1974, announced their nuclearization plan, mm. built 40 reactors in seven years. We need that level of ambition. And what I've been encouraged by, and probably the number one topic this week, is what does the Inflation Reduction Act mean for accelerating the green industries? Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, everyone in Europe and Asia are thinking about what that means in response. And as you say, it's complicated because mm. there's more dependency upon China for greener, rare earths. So there's a very complex equation. But I think on the whole, I'm in encouraged by the commitment to accelerate uh, transition. So tell me a little bit more about some of the complexities, because at the beginning of the war, everybody thought, well, silver lining is, well, move to renewables. It'll be great. But it's not that simple. No, well, look, there, there, are, there are many different aspects. So the first would be if you move towards a greener grid, more renewables, it's got more volatility, more variability. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a week or two every year in the UK, for instance, where we don't get seven days of consecutive wind. Mm. So you need to have a, a grid which has got resilience, because that's what we're really lacking. Mm. So you will need fossil fuels for longer. And so one very difficult debate is, how do we get more green, but gas remains the, mm -hmm. the, 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 swing, uh, uh, the swing source of energy? But the second, of course, is how we finance it. And as we've chatted about mm. several times here uh, in Davos, um, we've talked about the need to get more money for green investing. Yep. For me, though, this year, we need more money for transition investing. Okay. And I've been talking about car key finance. How do we take the grey industries mm -hmm. to go green? But this will take a decade. And, and it's not that easy to persuade people to invest in old industries to go green. Mm. Because at the moment you invest, it looks like investing in dirtier industries. Well, you get accused of, of greenwashing, right? And exactly. you get accused of, of keeping this energy source going that we all know we've got to move off. But tell me why that is. Why do we need this khaki investing? Uh, so, well, so today, 80% of energy comes from fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. We cannot turn that off automatically. And in fact, as we've, we need to have some maintenance capex. So one statistic which my old boss, Mark Carney, likes to use is at the moment, for every dollar invested in green and renewable energy, there's a dollar in fossil fuels. Mm. By the end of this decade, we need that to be four to one. But it's not four to zero. And that's the challenge here is the activists rightly want it to go to zero, mm. but to keep lights on and to provide the, uh, both the affordability and security that we need. And I think that what you're hearing much more about policymakers is there's a trilemma. Mm -hmm. How do you trade off the environment with energy security, with energy affordability? Because without affordable energy, you lose the democ democratic vote to go green fast, mm. which is what is in our interest. So talk about how Europe can respond to the, the, the IRA in, in the US. I say those words and I always think, I think we need to define our terms, but tell me how Europe should respond given, given the growth in green in the US. Well, look, I think, so um, renewable energy is very capital intensive. Mm. So about 80% of the cost of renewables is upfront. So we need to find a way to nudge that forward quickly. So I do think that subsidies are helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think what's been striking about that US Green Subsidy Act was we've had 25 years of thinking the right answer was a carbon tax, mm. but we just didn't get democratic support for that. They've turned it on its head and said, let's just give a, d a green discount through the subsidies. So I think whether it's offshore wind in Europe, which where we really should be a world leader, mm -hmm. or whether it's through some of the rare earths where the Nordics have just had a great mm -hmm. find, mm -hmm. we need ways to accelerate the, the, that area of transition. And I do think subsidies are right. I was with the Belgian Prime Minister the other night, he thought part of the issue in politics is the narrative. So he said, we need a CIA, a Climate Investment Act, to <laughs> respond to the IRA. I love that we have to use, reuse these acronyms. It's something <laughs> that you thought was one thing. It's completely changed. OK, one thing that people who are watching this video can go and do differently to encourage their, their policymakers, their governments to 
move faster towards this, this kind of investing? So if I had to say one, I think it's that every company needs a net zero plan mm -hmm. and a good one. And I've recently had the honour of joining the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund or their climate board. They've uh, said that six months ago, only 10% of the companies they invest in had a, had a plan. Today, 17% of the companies they invest in have a net zero plan. Mm. And we need that to get to as close to 100. Because as business really thinks about climate, energy security, decarbonisation in their business as usual, that will help work with the public sector to really accelerate these things. Hugh, thank you very much for stopping by the Hub Culture studio in Davos. And I'm Edie Lush. Thank you.